Mr. President, members of the court, it is an honor to appear before you and to do so on behalf of the Republic of Turkey. Before addressing the central issue in this case, let me make two preliminary remarks. First, this is not a case about whether the events of 1915 constitute genocide. Turkey shares the view of the Swiss government that the Grand Chamber is not called upon to make history by recognizing the events as genocide. The court has reiterated repeatedly that it is not its role to settle or arbitrate the underlying historical issues which form part of an ongoing public debate. Secondly, we have heard this morning that the Swiss government has not recognized the events of 1915 as genocide and that the Swiss domestic courts involved in the present case have not done so either. Against this background, it is surprising that the applicant could have been convicted for genocide denial on the basis of a large consensus of Swiss public opinion. Indeed, it is even more than surprising that the applicant could be convicted by the Swiss courts for genocide denial without the courts themselves ever establishing that the events constituted genocide or recognizing these events as genocide. Mr. President, the central issue in this case is whether the applicant's criminal conviction is necessary in a democratic society, or in other words, whether there is a pressing social need for his conviction. The court has pointed out on several occasions that the contracting state's margin of appreciation in assessing whether such a need exists is limited in cases of political speech or debate on matters of public interest. That statements on the legal characterization of the events of 1915 as genocide qualify as both political speech and a contribution to an ongoing debate on a matter of public interest has been confirmed by this court in several cases brought against Turkey. In its judgment in Dink versus Turkey at paragraph 127, the court held that opinions expressed on the events of 1915 qualified as political speech. The court, at paragraph 135, held that the legal characterization of the events as genocide concerned an issue of indisputable public interest in a democratic society, and that the debate surrounding these events should be able to take place freely. In Gütschli versus Turkey, at paragraph 34, the court observed that the Armenian issue constituted a debate of public interest and that in such matters, restrictions on freedom of expression call for a particularly narrow interpretation. Mr. President, what is political speech and of indisputable public interest in Turkey must surely be the same in Switzerland. Mr. President, where, as in the instant case, the applicant's statements constitute political speech and contribute to a debate on a matter of public interest, the contracting state's margin of appreciation <laughs> in assessing whether there exists a pressing social need for the interference with the right to freedom of expression is limited. The court has stressed many times that in such a situation, European supervision of both the law and the decisions of the national courts applying it must be strict 
because of the importance of the right in question. Strict supervision by the court does not mean that the court acts as a fourth instance. The fourth instance doctrine has been developed in the context of Article 6 of the Convention. It has no application in a case where the violation of Article 10 of the Convention consists of a court judgment. Applying the strict supervision requirement, the Swiss government must convincingly establish that there was a pressing social need for the applicant's criminal conviction. For that purpose, it must adduce relevant and sufficient reasons. Mr. President, members of the court, Switzerland has clearly failed to do so. The applicant was convicted for racial discrimination on the basis of Article 261 bis, paragraph 4 of the Swiss Penal Code. This provision does not outlaw genocide denial per se, but outlaws genocide denial as a means to denigrate or discriminate against a group of persons on racial grounds in a way that violates their human dignity. What is required is genocide denial with a racist purpose in a manner that violates human dignity. When reviewing the applicant's conviction, the court must look at the case as a whole, including the purpose pursued by the applicant, the content of his statements, and the content in which they were made. Mr. President, let me start with the purpose pursued. The applicant's purpose was not to racially discriminate against the Armenian people or members of the Armenian community in Switzerland, but to criticize and to challenge the decisions of the Swiss National Council to prescribe the events of 1915 as genocide and to criminalize any expression calling this prescription into question. The applicant did not intend to spark off any controversy that was gratuitous or detached from the reality of contemporary thought, but to make a contribution to a controversial and ongoing debate. As the court pointed out in Cox versus Turkey at paragraph 42, the legal characterization of the events of 1915 as genocide continues to be the subject of heated debate, not only within Turkey, but also in the international arena. The content of the applicant's statements also does not establish any evidence of racial discrimination or a violation of the human dignity of the members of the Armenian community in Switzerland. The applicant never called into question the existence of massacres and deportations in the territory of the former Ottoman Empire in 1915, but opposed their legal characterization as genocide. What is at issue here, Mr. President, <laughs> is not the denial of historical facts, but rather the opposition to the application of the legal concept of genocide to those very facts. The present case is in no way comparable to the denial of the Holocaust, where the deniers have disputed the historical facts, namely the existence of gas chambers in concentration camps, the mass killings, or the use of poisonous gas. The applicant has not alleged that the victims falsified history. On the contrary, the applicant, like the victims and their descendants, acknowledges the historical facts of massacres and deportations. What the parties disagree about is the legal characterization 
of these historical facts. Challenging the legal characterization of the events of 1915 as genocide does not reveal any racist aims or motives and thus cannot justify any restriction on the freedom of expression. The fact that the applicant called the legal characterization of the events of 1915 as genocide an international lie does not provide any evidence of racial discrimination or an attack on the human dignity of Armenians. The statement is not related to any person or group of persons, but refers to a specific opinion. At most, it may be related to any holder of that opinion. In that case, it relates as much to the members of the Swiss National Council who recognized the events of 1915 as genocide as it relates to any Armenian holding that view. Calling something an international lie is not the same as calling a certain group of persons liars. As such, it has no racial connotation. The fact that the applicant described the Ottoman Armenians as aggressors, referred to the ideas of Talat Pasha, stated that he would never change his position and placed the United States and Europe on par with Hitler is of no relevance to the present case. Mr. President, the case before you concerns the applicant's conviction for denying a genocide in order to denigrate or discriminate against a group of persons on ground of their race. Racial discrimination must result from the denial of genocide, not from any other opinions uttered by the applicant. In any case, none of these opinions reveals any motives of racial discrimination. It should be noted that the applicant was never prosecuted for incitement to hatred or racial discrimination, which are separate offences under the first paragraph of Article 261 bis of the Swiss Penal Code. While Armenians might find some of the applicant's statements disrespectful, disturbing, or even distressing, such sentiments alone, however understandable, cannot determine the existence of racial discrimination and a violation of human dignity, and thus cannot set the limits of freedom of expression. Such limits must not be based on the sensitivity of a particular group, but on objective general standards. The court had to deal with disrespectful and offensive statements on the events of 1915 before. In Cox versus Turkey, the court held at paragraph 42 that the opinions expressed on these issues by one side may sometimes offend the other side, but that a democratic society requires tolerance and broad-mindedness in the face of controversial expressions. In Gücli versus Turkey, another case dealing with exactly the events of 1915, the court recalled at paragraph 36, and I quote, if the offending speech contains conclusions and phrases that may offend, shock, or even worry some, especially those who adhere to the views expressed by the authorities of the state, the court has repeatedly stated that such ideas do not lose, as such, the benefit of freedom of expression." End of quote. Mr. President, the objective standard applied in the cases brought against Turkey should equally be applied in the present case. Finally, Mr. President, the court should look at the context in which the applicant's statements were made when reviewing the applicant's criminal conviction. 
The applicant was and is not alone in opposing the legal characterization of the events of 1915 as genocide. Considering that several European and other governments have publicly stated that they do not recognize the events of 1915 as genocide, the applicant had no reason to assume that such a position would automatically be treated as racist and as violating the dignity of Armenians. Challenging the legal characterization of the events of 1915 as genocide does not have the same effect as denials of the Holocaust. While Holocaust denial nowadays is one of the main vehicles of anti-Semitism, there is no comparable anti-Armenianism in the world today. The notion that the denial of the legal characterization of the events of 1915 as genocide may constitute a form of incitement to anti-Armenian feelings or even incitement to violence, discrimination or racial hatred against the Armenian community in Switzerland is without foundation. For all those reasons, the government of the Republic of Turkey respectfully invites the court to conclude that there was no pressing social need for the applicant's criminal conviction and to hold that there has been a violation of Article 10 of the Convention. Mr. President, members of the court, on behalf of the delegation of Turkey, I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Professor Talmon. I now call